there. It's that time of year when most of us start decorating our trees or trimming our houses for Christmas. Last year I made this beautiful tree topper angel. And this year I decided that rather than make another big tree topper, I mean, you don't have one tree top, how about make some coordinating designs? And this year I've made little snowflakes that you can see are very open, very lacy looking, and they're designed to look like hand crochet without all the tedium. So you can whip these up really quick. They all sew in a four by four hoop, and they're pretty easy. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today. Hi, I'm Lindy Goodall, Lindy G Embroidery. And I wanna show you what's included on the snowflakes package. You'll get a variety of snowflakes, and you can see some here. I've sewn them in different threads, and there are some that are small enough that can be used for earrings. So I've just hooked some earring hooks through there. And here I've sewn with two layers of, or two strands of 40 weight thread in the needle. This happens to be soft light metallic. This is a single layer of soft light metallic. And some of these other ones are um, sulky 30 weight cotton and sulky 30 weight blendables. So you can use a variety of threads. I really think the heavier look looks a little bit better. Now in addition, you'll also get a 14 page instruction booklet that you can print out. I've printed it two sided here. I do encourage you to read the instructions because this answers most of the questions that I get asked on these kind of designs. In addition to that, you'll get a two page template, blocking template. And what you're going to do with these is you're going to cut them out and mount them on a board. And I'm just using a scrap of foam core here. And I've cut them out, taped them on, and then I've taken a piece of kitchen wrap and just stretched it over the top. And this will prevent your snowflakes from sticking to the, the templates or from picking up the ink from the templates. Now I do want to show you this angel. And here she is sewn out in the soft light metallic thread. And this is what she looks like before she gets assembled. I know that it's kind of hard to see her finished on the top of my tree. But you hook her together in the back with these little buttons. And she's been kind of flattened out here. And then you just set this inside. And that's how she sits on your tree. And she'll also sit on a table. You can flare out her skirt if you want to. This is a separate project, and once again, it includes full instructions. So let's talk about stabilizer. You're going to need to use two layers of stabilizer, and I like to use the wash away fiber kind of stabilizer. Do not try to use a film. They just perforate, they'll fall apart, and so will your snowflake. Now on this particular one, all these designs fit in a four by four hoop or 100 by 100 millimeter hoop. So I've just used a small roll. Usually I, purchase my stabilizer on large rolls and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But I've unrolled this entire roll, matched them up end to end, and then re-rolled them back on and I'm holding it with a clip. And then I think you can see here where I've cut out previous snowflakes. And so I'm working from this end. This is going to hang off the outside of your where your hoop attaches so it won't get in the way. And this is the best way to conserve stabilizer. Notice too that I've moved my snowflake over to this outer edge. Now, this is not an embroidery best practice. And if your machine works well this way, go for it. If it doesn't, the best idea is to sew right in the middle because that's where you have the most even tensions. Now, if you have a larger hoop or you have a machine that has more than just a 4 by 4 sewing field, I get these large rolls. And then what I do is I just take my hoop, I pull out enough, and I just cut off two strips. And then I just hoop it the same way I did with the other one. I hoop from one end to the other, so I might sew from that end up to this end, cutting off as I go. Don't pre-cut your pieces because you'll waste a lot of stabilizer that way. This is Sulky, Fabri um, yeah, Sulky Fabrisolvi, and it's a fiber-based, use two layers once again. Now let's look at thread. I've used a variety of threads. I like the soft light metallic, I didn't use the red yet, but I did use white and I used two layers. So I used a white and a silver, I tried the white and the blue. The angel, the metallic angel that you saw earlier, it was done in this thread. Now I also used the sulky 30 weight cotton and 30 weight blendables. So here's the blendable 
that I used on that blue snowflake. And I like these because the color varies. It's not stripey like some of the variegateds are. Now here's a specialty thread I had in my stash. And it's a 30 weight from Madeira. And it's very coarse. So you're going to have to play with this one to see if you can get it to sew well. It is a rayon, so um, maybe slow your machine down, lighten up your tensions, and use a larger needle. And you should get okay results. Now, if you're using metallic threads or other specialty threads, this is one of my favorite gadgets. This is um, the Echidna, Echidna Controller Twist Thread Stand. It's a mouthful. And what makes it different from the kind that you get at your normal sewing store is that it has an adjustable spool pin. And the idea with the adjustable spool pin is that the thread will come up and wrap around that spool pin and it'll take out any kinks. And so you can adjust this to whatever you need. It's going to be kind of hard to see here. But when I was doing the two threads in the needle, I actually used two stands and I had one metallic on each stand. Now the soft light metallic does come in from Australia and we have it in our cart. You can go, uh, check out any specials we might have there. So now let's sew. Okay, we're at the machine. I have my hoop attached, my design is loaded, and I've got my roll of stabilizer sitting out here on another little table so that it won't get caught up in anything. And what you really need to remember about embroidering lace is that both sides are going to show when you're done. So you want to pay careful attention to your tensions. You may want to match your bobbin thread. I'm sewing in just red sewing thread here so it makes it easier for you to see what I'm doing. But another thing is don't let any thread tails get caught up in the sewing. So we want to make sure that when we start the machine we pull up the thread tail, which I'm going to do here in just a moment. And we want to make sure that if we break a thread or we have any kind of thread snapping or anything like that going on that we back up make sure that we reconnect the threads and we trim those thread tails. Because I can tell you, if they get sewn in, they're really a bear to get sewn out. So let's zoom in so you can see how I'm going to do this. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my upper thread tail and I'm just going to manually drop the needle and pull up that first stitch. And you'll probably need some tweezers or something to pull it up. And, and it's really hard to see against this white thread a white stabilizer. I'm just going to pull it up and I'm going to hold those thread tails and as I start to sew my stitches will get anchored and once they're anchored I'm going to stop the machine if your machine doesn't stop automatically and trim these thread tails and that's a really important thing to do. Once you've trimmed off your thread tails continue sewing until the design is done and then we'll move on to that step next. Now I really recommend that you sew one complete design all the way through and take it through all the steps in the process so that you can see if your tensions are set correctly, if you like how everything's sewing out, and once you get everything balanced and working correctly, then you can sew a whole blizzard. Because if you sew the blizzard first, you might find that maybe your tensions were wrong and they're not connecting. So take the time to do one first. And let's see what the next step is. So now we're ready to finish our flake. I want to show you what we've got set up here. I have my pin board already um, ready to work on, and I have my snowflake, and I have it laying there where I'm going to pin it. If I'm doing a lot of snowflakes, I lay them all out, and then I'm going to work probably from left to right because I'm right-handed and it makes it easier to work with the pins, and you'll see the reason for that in a minute. I have a towel for blotting out my uh, excess water. I have some tongs because the water is going to be really hot and I have a thermos down here of water. Now, here's my snowflake and you can see that it's already trimmed out. I've trimmed off the excess stabilizer and I'm not going to cut out in between those holes. I also like to hold it up to the light and make sure that there, it's all connected in there. If there are places where I missed one place, sometimes it's a, a thread jerk, sometimes it's a skip stitch on the machine, I'm just going to pin it into place. If there are a whole lot of areas that didn't catch, well, you're probably going to have to go back and fix your process. So let's rinse this guy out. Now put some water in here. When I'm doing a whole batch of these, I'll put um, the water in a crock pot and it makes it a lot easier to work with. I like to hold them with the tongs. I don't have asbestos fingers and just swoosh it around in there. 
You don't want to leave them soak because it'll soak out too much stuff. And then you'll just lay it out on your towel. Blot out the excess. And pin it. So I usually just pin at the points. Some of the snowflakes are going to require quite a few pins. Some of them not so many. So we'll just pin this little guy out. You want to pay attention because some of these are pretty open and it's easy to get the areas twisted around. You want to make sure everything's smooth and flat. For example, on this flake, it's got a lot of picos on it. So sometimes the picos will be sticking up in the air and what I'll do is I'll just dip my paintbrush in some water and I'll just smooth it out like that. And it gets everything flat. So now it's ready to dry and we'll just set it aside. And I'll show you how you can do some further embellishments. Now crystals, hot fix crystals are all the rage. We love putting crystals on all kinds of things. But the snowflakes are so light that I'm kind of worried that the crystals might just weight them down a little bit too much. So I've got this glitter glue and all I did was kind of dot them along the edges. Now I don't think the camera will pick it up but I've just dotted them all along on these picos and it's just kind of like icing a cookie. You're just going to squirt out a little dot on each end and let it dry. Now this does take a while to dry, probably a couple hours anyway. So don't be doing this right before you want to use it because it will dry very fast. Now they're ready to do whatever you want to do with them. Hang them in a window, give them as gifts, use them as package ties, put them in a greeting card, hang them on your tree, or sell them at craft bazaars. You're more than welcome to sell these in your Etsy shop or on your Facebook page or your, anywhere you sell designs. So you can sell the finished sewn embroideries any way you want. So I hope you'll have some fun with these.